स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया welcome to this lecture in today's lecture we are going to talk about some applications of mean value theorem so essentially what we are doing is this let us just uh, do a small revision we had this equation the plusian of u equals to 0 yeah um, this is just a simple uh, harmonic uh, this is called a laplace equation the solutions are called harmonic functions right so let's say this is in omega and u restricted to the boundary is uh, i mean um, some function g yeah now the question was this so the question was is it well posed yeah uh, or maybe i can do a more general problem let's say i, I take a pause or equation okay yeah, let's say this is f now the question is is one well posed well posed okay now uh, you uh, have i think more or less some idea of what to do see essentially uh, let's say if this omega is can be any omega right i mean it it may not be a particularly a rectangle or a circle or a sphere that sort of thing so not a very nice so if let me put it this way if omega is not a nice domain yeah uh, you do understand what i mean by nice so you know the usual domains okay not a nice domain okay then what happens separation of variable fails yeah okay so essentially i, I give you a crazy looking domain right i mean something like this let's say huh? something like this a separation of variable you can't use separation of variable here right so what do you do then let's see the point is this for this sort of domain okay but i mean for um, there are most of the domains which you can think of separation of variable won't work and essentially what do you do in those cases in those cases we rely on we rely on your uh, qualitative analysis okay qualitative qualitative analysis so let me give you a small remark here see i mean you may have heard that green's function you can actually uh, construct a green's function and you can use it to solve uh, this sort of pozo equation right yeah so this is called a pozo equation if you remember okay and uh, so you, you may have heard about it I, we didn't talk about it in this course but uh, you may have heard that there are you know, functions called green's functions which you can use to solve this problem of course there are okay and for a arbitrary domain i mean not any arbitrary domain but uh, i mean smooth arbitrary domain we will talk about it later what sort of domains we are we can but uh, for uh, generally for most of the domains we can actually construct a green's function i mean you can show that there exists green's function which solve the pozo equation that can be done yeah the problem is this that green's function you can only show that that exists yeah you cannot actually find a explicit function so here also the same thing is happening you cannot find an explicit uh, you know solution of this equation in any case so what do you do then so in this case what you are doing without solving the equation we are trying to find some properties of this uh, solution so let's say any this problem has some solutions okay i want to find some properties of the solution we have seen what are the properties we have seen till now properties we have seen that uh, this one admits a unique solution right admit an unique solution provided it exists it exists okay so you see essentially we did not prove that there are solutions but if you can show that there are solutions then we have showed that the problem admits a unique solution this you remember we did in the, the earlier week okay and moreover for this problem uh, for laplacian u equals to 0 so basically harmonic uh, function if a function is harmonic okay so any solution of this equation okay uh, what does it do it satisfies this right mean value property so over bxr u of y dy 
please do not underestimate this property this is probably the most fundamental property uh, you can think of of some particular class of functions okay so u of uh, z ds z okay so uh, this is the mean value property this we have proved last class so in now what we are going to do is i am going to show you some more properties of this harmonic function see once you understand harmonic functions pozo equation uh, i mean dealing with pozo equation is much easier okay so we will only concentrate on harmonic function for now so what we are doing is we are going to prove some property of harmonic functions okay if you remember what are harmonic functions these are functions for which laplacian of u is equals to 0 okay so properties of harmonic function so the first important property very very important property is called a uh, strong maximum principle strong maximum principle principle okay so what it says is this it says that suppose suppose u is in c2 omega intersection c omega bar okay so what we are doing is we are saying that the function let's say that's your omega okay that's your omega where we are talking about and so essentially here laplacian of u is zero so we are looking for properties of u see we haven't solved this problem yeah of course you can find some solutions but not everyone but the point is this let's say any u is there which is in this uh, i mean laplacian we satisfy laplacian u equals to 0 i am writing down some properties of those in some domain yeah so let's say that's your omega now we are using u to be c2 so inside the double derivative exists and they are continuous inside okay and what about on the boundary boundary double derivative may not exist but boundary it um, actually coincides with a continuous function right c omega bar so let's say this is harmonic harmonic within within omega clear so this is what we are assuming okay now okay let me give you this and then we'll talk about that um, the remark first of all what happens is if this happens you can say that the maximum of u over omega bar equals to the maximum of u over the boundary clear and number 2 what you can do is you can show that um, if there exists x not in omega such that u of x not is equals to the maximum of u over omega bar okay so essentially what it is saying is if the maximum of u is attained anywhere in the interior of the domain then u is constant here then u is constant provided provided omega is connected connected clear okay so what exactly is it saying let, let us understand first the theorem this is a very very important theorem the proof is not very difficult once you prove the mean value property but uh, i mean let us understand what is thing it is saying see see in the first uh, assumption we haven't assumed that omega uh, is connected okay we did not assume that okay so what we are saying is the maximum of u over omega bar is equal to maximum of of u over the boundary so basically what it is saying is the maximum u attains in maximum on the boundary it is see the first thing note note property 1 implies implies the maximum is attained attained on the boundary okay see property 1 does not say anything about the interior i mean it may happen that it is also there is a point where in the interior also it is taking maximum but you can always guarantee that there is a point okay it's a see one is not saying that it cannot attain the maximum in the interior please understand this yeah it is saying that you can always find a point 
on the boundary of the domain where the maximum is attained that is what it is saying yeah it may very well be ha happening so say it does not imply that the maximum is not attained in the maximum is not attained in the interior okay so it is not saying that the maximum cannot be attained in the interior it may be but it is saying that that i mean we don't know whether that happens or not all we know is it is always attending on the boundary this so this is the first property note the second property is this is very important yes here i did not assume anything on omega okay so important thing so let me put it i, I don't know maybe let us put it in white huh? omega is open and bounded domain in rn okay here see please understand for a strong maximum principle to hold this has to be open and bounded this is very important why because you see if it is open omega bar is closed right and it is a bounded domain so basically you are looking at a continuous function on a closed bounded domain which is a compact set so continuous function on a compact set attains its maxima so that is why this maxima is there do you understand what i am saying see please uh, i mean try to understand this thing without this condition this is very important okay this condition you cannot guarantee that this happens because you cannot even guarantee that the maximum is attained okay so let me put it this way without without the boundedness boundedness of omega without the boundedness of omega uh, the property does not hold okay so that is true okay now let let us give you an example yeah uh, let let me give you an example and uh, the, the problem okay uh, before that there is another property which we want to talk about number 3 see here i am saying the maximum is attained on the um, boundary right that is what i am saying i am not saying it is not attaining on the interior i am still talking about one okay you can also say that the minimum c u is a continuous function u is a continuous function on a closed bounded set right o, e omega is open omega bar is closed right so it is a continuous function on a closed and bounded domain so it attains the maxima and the minima now the question is this if the maxima is attained on the boundary where does the minima is attained so the minimum of u over omega bar on the whole domain including the boundary omega bar is attaining on minimum of u over the boundary okay this is also true so what you can say is the maxima and the minima is always attained on the boundary how do you prove it just replace replace u with minus u okay see u satisfies the harmonic equation uh, sorry the laplace equation so minus u also satisfies the laplace equation is uh, i mean laplace equation the set of, the space of solutions are um, it's a vector space right so minus u will also satisfy it and you can just replace the uh, i mean u with minus u and you can say that the maximum can be replaced with the minimum okay now number 2 this is what is so important about the property 2 property 2 okay property 2 is important because what it says is this it connects the whole thing so it is saying that once you understand that omega is connected see most of the time so please remember this thing i am not going to repeat this again in this course in this course essentially course we always assume always assume omega is connected connected okay 
this is always assumed but uh, generally i mean why so the, you may ask that why i am putting these two conditions separately see this condition the second property what does it say it says that if there is a maximum yeah if a maximum is attained in the interior what it is saying is this see in the earlier case it is saying that the maximum is attained on the boundary it does not say anything about the interior it may or may not happen on the interior in the second property it is saying that if there is a point where the maximum is attained right then the function has to be constant clear yeah? and this is true if the domain is connected okay but for our course we are always assuming omega is connected okay so so for our course we we'll always assume that the omega is connected so basically hence hence the strong maximal principle i will write it like this smp strong maximal principle okay smp implies implies that the maximum the maximum of a harmonic function can only be attained on the boundary of the domain okay boundary of omega so clear is it clear see unless unless the function is constant so is this clear so what is it saying it is saying that t it is saying that if the maxima is attained on the somewhere in the interior then the function is constant provided omega is connected now in our course we are always assuming omega, omega is connected okay so connected or not you always know that there is a maxima on the boundary and here it is saying if there is a interior point where the maximum is attained then it is constant so you can plus these two together and you can say that the maximum of a harmonic function okay the maximum of a harmonic function can only be attained on the boundary of the domain until unless the function is constant so basically if you just throw away the constant functions all other harmonic functions has to attend so basically it says let me put it this if you if you throw away the harmonic constant harmonic functions okay constant harmonic functions functions then all others attain its maxima slash minima okay on the boundary i hope this is clear yes and you may think that i am taking too much time uh, explaining this thing this is the most fundamental property of pdes so see mean value property is such a property which is always only satisfied by harmonic functions okay this maximal principle we are using we are proving maximal principle using mean value theorem but maximal principle can be used okay you can find maximal principles not only in laplace equation but also heat equation and uh, heat equation also okay so le let us write it down and many other um, partial differential logic so this is a very important property okay so uh, this is a very very fundamental property let me put it in a star kind of thing huh? this is a star property let's just put it like this huh? very very important please remember this thing so this is strong maximal principle here we are just doing it for a laplace equation later we will do it for a heat equation also okay but for heat equation we won't do any i mean not exactly the mean value property which we did so let us uh, look at the proof of this thing what is the proof of this thing the proof is very easy so let us assume that uh, so we are um, see we are not um, really interested in all this you know omega is not connected no no omega is connected so we will assume we assume omega is connected here okay omega is connected and hence if omega is connected what we are going to do is let we will assume let x not yeah is in Uh, x not is in omega with u of x not 
with u at the point x naught is m okay which is given by the maximum of u over omega bar clear so basically what we are saying is there is a point in the interior so essentially what do you have to show i just have to show that c u is a continuous function on omega bar so basically definitely u attains its maxima right maxima and a minima is always attained somewhere either it is on the boundary or in the interior we just have to show it does not attain in the interior that's all and then definitely it has to be on the boundary right okay so let's just assume that there's a point x not where uh, it is taking the maxima so the maximum of u over omega bar is m where u of x not uh, is yeah that's the value of u at the point x not now what we are going to do is you said okay r which is basically uh, between Mm, you see what we are going to do is, is something like this let's say x not is some point here okay the distance between x not and boundary is this one yeah and we are choosing a r which is like uh, you know smaller than this so basically you can choose r like you know d by 2 let's say yeah you can do that huh? so basically that's your r so i'm choosing a small ball so essentially that ball will be on the domain like this yeah so if that happens the mean value property the mean value property uh, says says m this is equals to u of x not clear that is what we have assumed and that is equals to integral over b x not r okay u of y dy c u is a harmonic function right this holds for harmonic function we, we want to show that the strong maximal principle holds for harmonic function so you see u of y dy on the on a ball b x not r any ball huh? here r is very small you don't realize this thing yeah and that is equals to u at the point x not this is mean value property right mean value property okay and uh, this what happens see what is the value of u on this ball so the maximum of u is always m i mean i don't care whether it is this ball or some other ball it is always m so I can always dominate it is with m times b x not r dy, right? This we can always do. So what is it? This is m, and this is one by the uh, the volume of b x r. So I will just write it like this, okay? For some, uh, you guys, whoever I mean, uh, for. If, if you guys know measure theory, essentially, essentially this is the measure of the ball. Okay. If you do not know, don't worry about it. It's just think of this as a volume of the ball. So when you do it like this, it is just one by the volume of ball and integral of dy. That is just the, again, the volume of the dx not r, right? So this gets cancelled out and this is equals to m. Clear? So this is clear. So now what we are as getting is this. See, see, we are going to get from here that the integral of u over this ball, this is equals to m and less than equals to m, right? Does this, so basically you see, and this equality, when does it hold? So equality, equality holds only if u equals to m, right? Within within b x not r clear yeah see if there is a point where u is less than m then this i mean you can please show this huh? you can actually dominate that thing with this thing so basically this will be greater than equal that uh, m minus epsilon let's say yeah and the, the measure of the ball so you the, i mean this cannot happen you cannot show this is equals to m yeah so please check this part that holds within only if u is equal to m within dxr. So hence, hence u of y is equal to m for all y in dx not r. Is this clear? Okay. So please check that u is equal to m. U has to be equal to m. So you can show that there are no points where u is less than m. So let's say there are, I mean, in, for some epsilon, u is m minus epsilon uh, on this ball. Okay. You can actually uh, dominate that. Uh, I mean, you can use this thing to dominate that particular thing. So basically, this will be greater than m minus epsilon times that whole thing. Huh? 
So you please do that part and you can show that the, the, it cannot be equal to m in that case. Yes. So u of y equals to m. This is clear. Now what is happening is this. So therefore, the set x in omega such that u of x equals to m, okay, this set is both both open and relatively relatively closed in omega. Okay, let, let me explain why what I mean by this thing. When I say it is relatively closed, of course, this uh, u is a closed set, right? Uh, sorry, u is a continuous function. And we are just basically looking at the values of u, level set of u for the height m. Okay, so this is basically in its own right a closed set in R n. Okay, it's a closed set in R n. But at the intersection of, I mean, it is relatively close because it is basically we are looking with the intersection of omega, this set. Okay, so that is why it is relatively closed in omega. And why it is open? Because we have showed that if you take a point there inside the, this set, then you can always have a ball, okay, of radius r um, where u is m. Yeah, so that is why it is open. So basically, you see, hence here, therefore, for a connected domain, for a connected domain, domain omega, okay, we constructed we constructed, let's say this set, this S, let's say this call, let's call it S, S such that S is non-empty, of course it is, because we have assumed that this is, there is a point where the, uh, I mean, interior where this is happening, okay? See, we have assumed that there is a point X naught where M is at end, okay? So essentially, this X naught point is always in S, okay? x naught is always in s uh, such that this happens and s is both open and relatively closed in omega right so all of this is happening and since omega is connected what can you say this will imply that s is equals to omega right because you guys already know that in a connected domain the if you have a subset which is both open and closed, then the subset has to be either free or the whole set. It cannot be free, so it has to be the whole set omega. Clear? So, um, hence, hence, there cannot exist a point x naught in omega such that the maximum of u, okay? So basically what we have showed, we have showed that S is essentially omega. So basically we, we showed that it is, uh, I mean, omega is a, far, I mean, um, you see, we, we, we proved the second part. We proved that if they are the minimum, maximum is attained on uh, in an interior, then it has to be constant, right? That is what he showed. S equals to omega, it has to be constant. So basically, u is equals to m in, on the whole domain omega. Okay. So maximum of u, uh, there does not. So basically, we showed that there does not exist x naught is omega such that maximum of u uh, is is attained is attained at x naught unless u is constant. Clear? Okay, so now, so this is this is very good. So we learned this thing. As I have again explained that this is also true. If we assume that, uh, you know, if we replace maxima with a minima, okay? So the same thing happens. Right, now let me make a small remark here, remark. Remark, okay, maximum principle does not hold, does not hold. See, see, whenever I say maximal principle, there is nothing maximum here. It, you can call it a minimum principle also, okay? Same thing. Maximum principle does not hold um, if omega 
is unbounded okay so basically you, of course maximum may or may not be attained that is one point even though maximum may be attained then also it may not hold okay so uh, you guys have to check this part it's a very simple example yeah take the exterior of the domain so i will give you some hint yeah i could have gave you the example but i want you to do it yourself hint uh, take omega to be the exterior of the domain x square plus y square less than one the complement of this thing okay take that to be your omega okay so essentially what am i doing i am taking the exterior of the unit ball okay so basically this is exterior of the unit ball exterior of the unit ball okay that's your domain now you choose a function yeah choose a function uh, a harmonic function now choose a harmonic function harmonic function of course not a constant here yeah? harmonic function in omega to show maximum strong maximal principle does not hold does not hold okay please do it yourself find a harmonic function okay which does not uh, for which i mean there will be a similar problem in assignment like this but uh, i mean when you are doing this thing please try to find it okay now let me give you another uh, property so of harmonic function so basically now we are going to use this maximal principle to show some other properties so properties properties okay see this property is called positivity positivity so what does it say it says that if u is in c omega bar intersection c2 omega okay and satisfy satisfy laplacian u equals to 0 in omega and u equals to g okay on the boundary let's say this is satisfies this so basically you are looking at a laplace equation yeah but uh, on the boundary it is g okay where where g is greater than equals zero clear okay then you can say u is positive everywhere in omega if g is positive positive somewhere on the boundary clear so what it is saying is this see this is a very easy property it says that you look at a laplace equation and u equals to g on the boundary yeah of course it is given that g is greater than equal to zero yeah what it is saying is this please realize this thing you take a point if you can show that there is one point on the boundary where g is positive yeah it is saying that just showing one point on the boundary where g is positive is enough to show that uh, u is positive everywhere in omega so this is a very important property you realize this thing yeah how can you do that i mean take five seconds think about it okay so i think most of you have got it so let me give you a short proof i mean there is nothing to prove actually but uh, still so let us look at the proof of this theorem what does it take to prove this thing so essentially um, you see since this is a, a harmonic function harmonic functions harmonic functions attains its maxima slash minima on the boundary that is what we learned boundary right now g is greater than equal to zero so basically u of x yeah for a for for all x on the closure of omega u of x is greater than equals to the minimum of u on the boundary del omega which is definitely true because 
the you see u of x is always uh, greater than equal the uh, minimum of u over omega bar right and that is essentially the minimum of u over um, the boundary because the uh, the maximum is always attained in the uh, on the boundary this is uh, using the first property okay so now this is equals to the minimum of del omega over g because u is g on the boundary right so and g is always greater than equal zero so the minimum of a non negative function is always non negative right so u of x here there hence hence u is non negative negative in omega bar yeah now we have to show that if g is positive somewhere u is positive everywhere so let let there exist x not such that u of x not is zero in omega okay so x not in omega such that this is zero okay see essentially what am i doing is this i have to show that u is always strictly greater than zero in omega so this is what so uh, we have to show have to show that u of x is strictly greater than 0 in omega right this is what we need to show so let's say there is a point x not where u of x is equals to 0 yeah if that if that happens then what you can say is this then then you see u of x is always greater than equal 0 in omega bar and there is a point where u is taking 0 in the interior so then u attain attain is minima minimum at an interior point right interior point so this is contrapositive statement we are assuming that if u is see we have to show u is greater than equal to zero let's say there is a point x not in omega where u is equal to zero yeah if that happens then uh, since e is non negative it means that e is attaining its minima which is zero at a interior point x not okay what does that therefore strong maximum principle that will imply u is constant constant in omega bar right that is what strong maximum principle says in that case okay so u is constant in omega bar but that is not true since that can't, that can't be true okay but that can't be true let me put it this way can't be true since g of x is greater than 0 okay let's say g of x1 is greater than 0 for some x1 in the boundary you see what is happening is this we already know that g is positive somewhere on, on the boundary so let's say there is a point x1 where g is greater than equal greater than 0 strictly greater than 0 now if g is strictly greater than 0 at point x1 on the boundary okay so why because if g is strictly greater than 0 on the boundary x1 then u at the point x1 is g at the point x1 because u and g are same on the boundary okay so this is strictly greater than 0 you are saying that u is constant on omega here u is constant along in omega bar there is a point on the boundary where u is positive okay so u has to be positive everywhere but again you showed that on the there is a point on x1 where u is 0 okay so that's a contradiction is it clear see what we did is this let me explain again we have to show that this is positive everywhere in omega right strictly positive let's say that there is a point where u of x naught is 0 in the interior of the domain yeah right if that happens strong maximal principle says what that it has to be constant in omega bar if it is constant in omega bar our condition is there is a point x1 on the boundary where g is positive yeah if that happens what happens at the to u at the point x1 it is basically g at the point x1 which is positive so basically you showed a point x1 on the boundary where u is positive and you have showed a point x0 in the interior where u is zero okay so but you are always strong maximal principle is saying that u is constant in omega bar yeah 
So that cannot happen, right? A constant function cannot take zero and one, zero at some point and one at that point. Hence, a contradiction. Hence, a contradiction. I hope this is fine. Contradiction. Okay. And uh, so um, we have proved that if G is positive somewhere at one point, then U is positive everywhere. Yeah. Very, very important theorem. So another very important um, property is the uniqueness. Uniqueness of solution to Poisson equation. See here, here, what I am doing is this. So this is property two. Okay, that's the that's your property two. Uh, okay, uh, this uniqueness of solution for the Poisson equation, what I mean by this is, let's say you are given this equation in omega and u equals to g on the boundary. Okay, of course, uh, where, where f and g are smooth. Let's just assume that. Huh? So basically, infinitely differentiable. Let's just assume this thing. We want to show that we want to show show that if u1 and u2 are two solutions distinct solutions or different solutions to one then u1 is equivalent to u2 in omega clear Okay, so uh, if you remember last uh, in one of the lectures, we have already, um, I mean, covered this thing that there is a unique solution for this problem. But now uh, we'll do it again in a very, in, I mean, we proved it earlier in the using integration by parts. Here, we'll use the Maxwell principle to prove it. So let's say, uh, so you define, this is just an application of Maxwell principle, that's all, nothing else. So you just define C to be U1 minus U2, okay, clearly. So clearly, C is smooth, okay, and so C is C2 in this case, yeah, if U1 and U2 are C2, C is C2, and it satisfies, satisfies, this is AND, okay, this is AND, it satisfies, so let's say, let me put it like minus Laplacian, it looks nice, huh? it's just a technical thing, nothing problem, no problem, huh? you can just use Laplacian also, okay, but it satisfies minus Laplacian of phi is 0 in omega and phi equals to 0 on the boundary, I hope this is fine, okay, so if phi is equal to u1 minus u2, u1 and u2 both satisfy this equation, so the difference of those two will also satisfy this equation because of the linearity of harmonic functions, yeah. Now, if that uh, happens, therefore, phi is harmonic in omega, right? See, here what is happening is these functions are not harmonic. This is not a harmonic function. But since I am taking the difference of those two, the difference is harmonic, right? Okay, so phi is harmonic function. Such that phi is zero on the boundary, yeah? So what do we, hence, hence, by strong maximal principle, we have okay one thing uh, again i am saying this thing again and again we will always assume omega is open bounded and connected okay this is always assumed okay in this course we are always going to assume this thing omega is open bounded and connected so by strong maximal principle what do you have you have the minimum of q over del omega is less than equal so over omega bar actually but then that is also in on the del omega okay so um, this is u of x u of x is always lies between this right maximum of u over the boundary i hope this is fine see u is always in between the maximum and the minimum of u over so this holds this holds for all x in omega bar, right? So maximum, if you just replace this thing with omega bar, this thing with omega bar. So u of x lies between the minimum of u over omega bar and the maximum of u over omega bar. Yeah, 
strong maximum principle says that the minimum of u over omega bar is on the boundary and again the maximum is also on the boundary so us lies between minimum of u over the boundary and the maximum of u over the boundary okay so what is the minimum so this means that this is basically minimum of phi over del omega less than equal i think it is already done right so maximum of phi over del omega right because u is phi on the del omega now you see phi is identically equals to zero on the boundary so this is less than equal u sorry uh, sorry i have to change this is not u huh? i have to do it for phi I'm sorry for this thing. This is phi. Phi is harmonic. So this is phi of x. Maximum of phi. Okay. So this is again phi and that is phi. Okay. So uh, what does it mean? It means that phi of x, put it this way. It means that phi of x is greater than or equal to 0 and again it is less than or equal to 0. So that will give you phi x is identically equal to 0 for all x on the closure of omega. Okay. And there hence, hence u1 is identically equals to 0, uh, is identically equals to u2 in omega bar. And uniqueness follows. Uniqueness follows. Okay. So, why I gave you this uh, application of this uh, strong maximal principles, uniqueness, because we already did uniqueness, but again I am doing it because i want you to understand that uh, for other problems of the c most of the times the other th the method which i showed you using integration bypass showing uniqueness that may or may not work you understand what i'm saying that may or may not work all the time maximum principle if for some operator for some particular equation if, if you can show maximum principle then i mean there's a good chance that this sort of equation will hold okay yeah, i mean you can actually say, talk about the uniqueness provided the function is linear Okay, function means uh, the operator is linear. Okay, right. Let me give you another very important property, number three. So the stability under perturbation. Okay, what stability under perturbation says is this. Let's say you have this equation yeah, in omega and u equals to g on the boundary okay so this is uh, the equation which we already have yeah so let's say you have a phenomena which you have somehow you know modeled and you have got something like this yeah and let's say while measuring the next time again you are doing the same thing uh, i mean you guys know that experiments have to be carried out uh, uh, many times in order to get a reliable data Right. So, again, you are doing the same experiment, but definitely there is a difference in measurement, right? So, let's say there is a slight, uh, I mean, change in measurement, okay? So, the source term is same. Source term is same. Uh, this is F in omega, but the data which you are going to get on the boundary, that is different. So, let's say this G is getting transferred to um, G, let's say, epsilon, okay, on the boundary. So, let's say we call it a U epsilon. Okay, so this is an epsilon perturbation. Yeah, let's say you solve this problem one, two. Let u and u epsilon solve one and two respectively. So what am I saying? I am saying that both u and epsilon solve the same problem in omega. Laplacian, so they satisfy minus Laplacian u equals to f minus Laplacian u equals to f. u and u epsilon both satisfy the same equation, right? But on the boundary, u is g and u epsilon is g epsilon on the boundary. That's the difference. So g epsilon can be, I mean, for example, you can think of g epsilon to be, uh, this is for an example, huh? it can be else also. Uh, something else. So, it, think of this as g plus epsilon, something like this. Huh? So, basically, you are just taking a small perturbation. This is, uh, I mean, think of physically as the uh, error, error in computation. Think of this as error in computation. Okay. So, basically, you have this respectively, such that, now this error, you see, you, you are measuring the same thing, but it may happen that the measurement is slightly off, right? So, basically, the difference between G epsilon and G is very small. So, such that the maximum, 
ओके ऑफ जी माइनस जी एफ सेलन ओके लेट्स से डेट इज लेस देन एफ सेलन सो वी चूज एफ सेलन पॉजिटिव लेट्स से दैट इज गिवन टू यू सो द मैक्सिमम एंड एक्स इज ऑन डेल ओमेगा सो फॉर इफ यू टेक द मैक्सिमम ऑफ जी माइनस जी एफ सेलन Yeah, let's say that is very small. So basically, what am I doing? I am assuming that while doing this, uh, I mean, measurement on the boundary, you know, the error is extremely small. So basically, the difference between G and G epsilon, yeah, for every x, the maximum of that is always bounded by epsilon. Yeah, we are assuming this thing. Yeah? Now, now let's say C, you are defining it by u minus u epsilon. Okay, clearly, clearly. Minus Laplacian of phi is zero in omega, okay, and phi is equal to g minus g epsilon on the boundary, okay. So you see what this gives you is the following: u of x. It means that the u. So by strong Maxwell principle, if this happens, see, p is a harmonic function, right? So therefore, since since C is harmonic in omega. Harmonic in omega, then strong Maxwell principle implies implies C of x. Okay, this. So you see what I am trying to say is this is always less than equal the maximum. Of C on the boundary for all x in omega bar, yes, yeah, that's the maximum feasible, right? So it says that the maximum is written on the boundary. That will imply that C of x. So what C of x? I can say this thing, right? Is less than equal maximum of mod C over del omega, right? I can say this, yeah. So you see what will happen is this. Mod C of x is essentially u minus u epsilon. Okay, this is less than equal maximum of del omega mod C is g minus g epsilon. So basically, C is g minus g epsilon on the boundary. So I'm just replacing with this with this, and this is given to be less than epsilon. Okay, so you see what this says is this: if you change the initial data data on the boundary a little bit. the change in the solution is also going to be i mean bounded by that uh, similar error right so that implies that the maximum of mod u minus u epsilon okay and uh, over omega bar this is less than epsilon okay so hence hence what does it say for let me put it this way for small change in boundary data boundary data okay the change in solution the change in solution in this sense that the maximum of u minus epsilon okay change in solution is also small okay more precisely more precisely it is bounded by the error error is this epsilon error in the boundary data right in the boundary data i hope this is fine yeah you have understood so what it is saying is this if you change your boundary data a little bit let's say and the change is given by the maximum of g minus g epsilon is less than epsilon if that happens then your initial uh, i mean the solution the solution u minus u epsilon what is the change in the solution that change is also bounded by epsilon yes okay so um, uh, this is change in the boundary data also changes the solution a little bit. so that is expected yeah so you see uh, by doing uh, this uniqueness theorem and this uh, stability and the perturbation we have actually uh, did two things so here so here we proved 
that Laplacian u equals to f in omega u equals to g on the boundary okay for this equation let's say that is one huh? so uniqueness and stability under perturbation under perturbation holds okay so we have proved it so we proved this particular thing for this equation okay for this equation now the question is this now the question is this so do you think do you think think that one is well posed one is well posed okay so if you remember what are the properties of well posed first of all you have to show that the existence uniqueness and then uh, the stability yeah we have proved the uniqueness and stability but we didn't prove existence so essentially the only thing left only thing left to do is to find the existence okay and this is the difficult question in this case and this we will do it in the next week but this week we will continue to talk about more properties of harmonic function yes so with this we are going to end this particular lecture